was withdrawn from the house, I will not dwell on it in the house in parliament. I'll not dwell so much on it. But just to let you know, in case this committee uh, approves you and the National Assembly, if you rethink of bringing it back, please look at some of the clauses that I need. Because from the events of this that happened in this country two months ago, you have realized that we have a very informed population in this country. And so that issue of NLC had come up and Kenyans were issues of land and you know how land is emotive. The second thing that was on it that Kenyans raised was the issue of inserting a new clause which will force freehold land owners, property owners who enjoy free ownership for perpetuity and can use the land for any purposes to pay land rate. Uh, you, you know, that was just a comment since it, had, it has been withdrawn. So to my question, one, who is a cartel? Every CS nominee talks of a cartel. I want you to explain to this committee your definition of cartel. The second question is the whole issue of the housing levy. By April 2024, the government had collected in excess of Kenya shillings 34 billion. How many houses can you confidently say have been constructed and completed as we speak? And lastly, with the Finance Act having been declared unconstitutional, I think yesterday, do you understand its import on the housing project and what next if this committee then uh, finds you suitable to hold that office? Thank you. Uh, we'll take another. Nelson. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mine is actually very brief. Um, affordable housing is one of the key pillars of Kenya Kwanzaa administration. In fact, the president has been uh, many times quoted as saying it was a deliberate way of creating employment. I want to ask you, Honorable uh, Nomini, how many young people have been employed by this program? And number two, do you think this program is sustainable and is it working? Go ahead. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, I think it is important that uh, even though Honorable Lesuda has not come by way of a question, for me to make one or two clarifications in respect of the authority and the mandate of the National Land Commission. Because many times there is misinformation or misunderstanding of the mandates. And I believe that there is no misunderstanding between ourselves and the National Land Commission. Uh, sometimes it's just propaganda. If you look at uh, Article 67, the, national, the functions of the National Land Commission are to manage public land on behalf of the national and county governments. Two, to recommend a national land policy to the national government. Indeed, I have one document already recommended, and we are working on the national land uh, policy, reviewing it after, since 2009. The review is supposed to take place every 10 years. Then to conduct research related to land and use of natural resources and make recommendations to appropriate authorities. To initiate investigations on its own motion that's regarding complaints, historical injustice, and all that. And then finally, the, then, then there is to encourage the application of traditional dispute resolution mechanisms to assess tax on land and premiums on uh, immovable property in any area designated by the law. And to monitor and have oversight responsibilities of land use planning. So I believe that the bill, one of the bills was honorable leader of majorities and the other one was my bill. There was the very sticky issue that was floating around, which was actually an incorrect position that we had planned to change uh, freehold title to leasehold titles. One, it is practically not possible within the law for me sitting as a minister or any of my officers to change land tenure from one uh, regime to the other meaning from leasehold, uh, freehold to leasehold. But with the application and consent of the owner, it is possible. So there was no provision that we had brought to do that. What raised maybe concern is the proposal to 
levy some charge or some fee on freehold ownership within our cities. Let me clarify again. The levy that we had proposed in the bill that was withdrawn was levy on freehold land within cities. So far, the by the description of cities under the Urban Areas and Cities Act, we have Nairobi, Mombasa, uh, Kisumu, Nakuru, and Eldoret is soon coming on board because it has been approved. So five cities. But the... Ch Ch yes. Sorry to interrupt the CS, but because you are House of Records, and she has mentioned a bill that I have sponsored, which uh, what she has said is not accurate. The bill that I had sponsored initially is what then became the ON Buyer Bill, amending the National Lands Commission Act on Section 14 and 15 of the National Lands Commission Act to vest powers uh, to the NLC Act. What Honorable Suda was asking is regarding the bill of the Land Amendment Bill Number Two of 2023, which I withdrew, uh, which came from which the was ministry. our bill, yes. And the issue she has raised is the issue of rates on freehold land. And in the bill, again, uh, it was not clear whether it was in cities. It is actually the Committee on Lands of the National Assembly that uh, in their report proposed that you limit that to cities. To cities. Uh, so I think it's good. Yeah, that the that process was ongoing. I agree and I accept. What, what came that from the uh, ministry we, is not what you're saying. The, the bill was ours. But there were many proposals to amend even that bill. And so far, maybe the argument is, I'm making this for clarification, that there was no proposal for rates because rates are not payable to the national government or the Ministry of Lands. Rates are payable to the county governments and they are doing their own uh, review of rates. We were proposing a levy or a charge on freeholds because freeholds within the cities then therefore are enjoying facilities and they are paying nothing. And uh, maybe I could say here that if you look at where the freeholds in this country and in this city, for example, using Nairobi on a speaker, is that the freeholds are within the Karen, the Mudaiga, the Lavington, and it's important that I say maybe some areas of Kirireshwa, Kitisuru, Kiuna, those upmarket areas. Why? I think it was a skewed way of of, of uh, lazing uh, tax against some people and not everybody. So that if you go to the whole of Eastland and the Southlands, then you will find that you know areas of uh, all these areas you know that I haven't mentioned, they are paying rates and they are paying uh, land rent both. And therefore, in other countries, what is happening is that. Um, if you have a freehold, then you pay, including any other land, you pay some development uh, tax because the land that you are sitting on is, is actually has been developed to equal. In, in this country, then, we are having some people paying and others are not paying. And I think that is a conversation that we will be able to bring back to the National Assembly for debate and discussion and also robust public participation and debate. And I don't think there is nothing wrong in saying that, but we must understand that in other jurisdictions, what is happening is that there is payment of, you know, against charge against land where developments have come and they were not there before, because anyway, these developments must be funded by either the land or by, uh, by a taxpayer. So, and, and I think that is what was, taken to mean that we are charging uh, a charge on freehold and there is likelihood. Alice Wahom, you are being too wordy. Yeah. You can say what you are saying in very concise terms. Yes. 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 The speaker, I, want I believe to I have uh, hold, maybe exhausted. Hold it as a point yes. of order there. Yeah. The speaker, it is good to have clarity on this matter because that bill was as well a controversial bill. It is very important to have clarity here that the proposal that came from the ministry was that all freehold land be, 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 be changed to leasehold 
in the whole republic. It is parliament, a committee of this parliament, and that's why parliament must be given uh, credit where they, they do their work. That is suggesting to them that we should maybe do it in cities. But the ministry, what they brought to parliament was that they want even the ancestral land that somebody is holding a free land, freehold in, in, in Migori. They wanted to, to change it to leasehold. For what? She should tell us why. What was informing that? Instead of now hiding under well, parliament. Hey, Dallas, why the, uh, the, the provision was uh, uh, saying that the minister will uh, be able to say to designate the areas, which then means you designate through regulations. And I would still have had to come to parliament to be allowed the designated areas that we would have picked. So, uh, and, uh, and therefore, the proposal by parliament, I commend, I think it, it helped and, impro yes, and it, it improved the, the provision. Mole? Uh, thank you, Chair, and I'm um, sorry I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, you have interrupted, just go on. Uh, <laughs> Chair, uh, <laughs> we are in a, nomina uh, a vetting process, and the leader of majority and the leader of minority have stated the actual position. But the nominee, she's trying to run away from the reality. The reality is that the bill which came to the House exactly wanted to levy even the ancestral land in this country. And it came from the ministry. She was the CS. So instead of using too many words, please admit, we move forward. Because at the end of the day, Kenyans could not accept your proposal. And it came from you. It did not come from the, uh, the House of Parliament. Speaker. It did not come from Speaker. Kenyans. It came from your office. Yes, sure. yes Alice. Uh, speaker, I said that uh, uh, the proposal had indicated that the minister we will designate areas where the levy will be. It was not blanket because it is not possible to collect. Point of order, it is share. not possible to collect levies in the order. entire country. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, yes. that, is, uh, that is true. But why do you want to subject a land that is in Bungoma or Migori for a minister who is sitting in Nairobi to designate whether it will be a freehold or a leasehold? Why do you want to do that? Just say it was uh, wrong to do that, and now you are rectifying, you are agreeing with Parliament for, for that issue to become a city's issue. Just sure. and we move on, Madam, Madam C. You are, you are a former oh. member of Parliament here. Yeah. I think the clarity I have protect. made, I have even given credit Mind. to Parliament, but I have said that it is Parliament that was going to give me permission <laughs> to say where to levy the. Yes. Point of order. Okay. A brief one. Yes. Mr. Yes, uh, Naisula. Thank you, Speaker. And I just want to put it to the nominee. And from what the, minor, the majority leader had said to another nominee here, that one of the challenges of the cabinet that was there before is communication. Because Kenyans are not understanding what you want to do. When they raise questions, it is said to be propaganda. But now we have confirmed here today that it is actually the truth. And so I think moving forward, if you are confirmed, and the last thing also is when there is public participation and Kenyans have an issue with a clause or with a matter in a bill, it should be discussed thoroughly and given the view of those who have who because the bill could be good everything else could be good and we have one contentious issue could we exhaust it because i can assure you after what happened in parliament these parliamentarians will not be a rubber stamp anymore to any issue that will be contentious uh, uh, um, uh, madam uh, nominee so that is all i wanted to do so that we could to say so that we could make progress yeah thank you i would uh, hate a parliament that is a rubber stamp it's of no use to anybody and uh, even themselves but uh, and i agree with you this bill had not even gone to uh second reading where the debate was going to happen and during debate, the proposals for amendments would obviously, by, by the House, I think the subject was still... We'll yeah. make progress. Yeah. Mm. What the members are telling you yes. is that a bill came 
from your ministry with these contentious proposals to the House, when it was picked up and spread like wildfire, the ministry maintained a conspiracy of silence. Instead of coming up to say, it was our bill, we withdraw it so that you quell the fire, you said nothing. But that is, uh, let's move on. Posing. Thank you. Thank you, Spe uh, Speaker. I think there is need for better communication. Yes. I agree with you throughout the entire government, yes. including my, the, my former ministry. Yes, Honorable even Speaker. His yes. Excellency the President has said, lamented, that one of the weaknesses in the government is poor communication. You are doing good things which nobody knows. And when you do bad ones, you don't own up. Uh, My speaker. questions on housing speak. levy. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, of order, Speaker. Can we proceed yes. yeah, to speaker. the housing levy question? I was asked by Honorable Koech how many uh, people or youth we have employed under the housing affordable housing uh, levy program. I want to confirm that on our in our records we have about 106,000 youth, both men and women, and I want to add here that they are, most of them are youthful, below 35, and we ensure also that we include women because we have women who have uh, the, the skills and uh, artiski, artisan skills, yes. Youth has no gender. It's just youth, men uh, and women. It's, uh, sometimes when you say uh, a man, it is said it is also a woman, but until you say yeah, it is uh, both male and female, then yes. there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. But uh, I would say the youth, it can be youth, w women and youth, or youth yes. men. Yes. So we have ensured that uh, gender is also observed in terms of uh, those who are working and benefiting. Is it sustainable? It will be sustainable if we are able to continue with the housing, uh, affordable housing uh, levy. And uh, I'm aware that uh, it is also still in court. Would I say that at, up to now we have over 100, we have at least 48,000 housing units that are in different stages of construction between maybe 20% and 95% some nearing completion. In fact, we expect that we will be launching several uh, of those uh, units this year. And so it is uh, sustainable. Because it's, this is one of the best projects and programs that the country can allow to continue. Everything